I think another, the, to take to another, another part, uh, something is, was really important uh, uh, was the, um, and on, on the process uh, and on the collaboration for was the EGAN matrix and how, uh, and why it's so important uh, to, to have it on the Osmos. Uh, um, so, uh, so on the, um, on a lot of synthesizer, uh, you have just a, a, a matrix of uh, I don't know 42, 42 modulation or something like that, and you have to take your uh, uh, your pressure, your aftertouch, etc., to uh, to one parameters. But something is really really unique and really interesting on the Ingen matrix is that uh, all your gesture is directly on the sound design process, and uh, it changes really really everything uh, on the approach with, uh, with the sound. Um, so, uh, so the idea is to, to give you a small example um, of, uh, of what, uh, what, what I learned and uh, some perhaps some basic interaction uh, that are really unique um, to, to the EGAN matrix. Um, so there are four uh, for principal gestures on the again matrix is um, is W that is the not on uh, the the Z that is the first uh, pressure pressure part uh, the Y which uh, which is the aftertouch and the X so um, if we take a kind of a basic interaction so you can put for instance you have so. Uh, I, I don't know if uh, it's really depending if, if everybody's already familiar to the again matrix or if perhaps can start with the basic gesture. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, bon. uh, sorry? Uh, I, I don't know if, um, if, if um, everybody here is already familiar to the Egan matrix or uh, is perhaps, uh, necess perhaps I can start from the basic uh, interaction. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So on the Egan matrix, so here's um, in the interface. So you have um, you have different kind of block. So this this size block here are uh, quite basic, in a way, uh, models. Uh, here's is more a complex module for physical modeling or other stuff, and so you have. Uh, and you have those different kind of modules. You have you can uh, you can uh, see the output of each one uh, there. So, for instance, uh, if I uh, here I got one oscillators, and if I want uh, to have uh, the the output of it, I can put uh, a gesture. So, for instance, I, I take the a direct gesture. So Z, uh, Z is for the pressure part, and I have to uh, to put a pitch on it. So I can define. Uh, a constant data. Uh, so here it will, it will output uh, some volume, but with uh, always the same pitch. But if I put uh, an X, it will change depending on the note. And um, if you look at um, all the parameters, there you can see how, um, how to put value uh, on each uh, parameters. So for instance, here is the, the shape of the oscillators. And um, so it's a value between 0 and 1. And so, for instance, if I put the aftertouch there, so it's a, uh, it's a Y later, I can have the value. So. Here is um, the four basic letters, but what is very interesting here is the, the principle of formula. Um, so, uh, so to be uh, at the beginning, uh, even if I, I know that the, that it was a powerful tool, I'm really not into math, and I was a little uh, more than a little afraid uh, to, to see the interface, but. Um, 
something is what is really interesting is that on the Egan matrix, and uh, if you if you like to play with synthesizer, as if you want to make uh, some new song, as because all the gestures are directly uh, on the interface. Uh, Sometimes you came from an idea of an interaction, and then you ma you're, you make the sound. So because on, on most synthesizers, you say, "Okay, now I w I'm, I'm going to make a, a bass sound or a pad or something like that." And with the matrix, sometimes, oh, if I take the acceleration, or if I want to make a release or something, and the, the interaction brings you new ideas that on other synths, really, it's, it's a really other approach. And uh, and um, Yes, it's a, 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 as Lippol sometimes says, it's a kind of Minecraft uh, of uh, synthesizer. You are totally free. It's a sandbox, and uh, it's really a great tool also to uh, uh, to think differently uh, when you make some presets. So, to so it was a, so you can put so different kind of formula, and on each formula, so a formula is a letter that you can see you can see here, and you can click click on it. And on the formula, you will uh, find the four basic uh, gesture interaction. Uh, so you have the you have the note off. So here, I can put a constant. So but you can assign it to uh, directly to uh, a part of the pressure and add so, some aftertouch information. And and uh, and you can quite easily be expressive with a really just one oscillator oscillator preset. Um, and so, but the idea also, uh, I think, with the continuum and with the osmos, is also. Because also, uh, as a beginner, I, I was a, a little surprised. Is uh, where is my classic ADSR uh, that I can normally find? And there's different kind of answer on that. So the first one is your gesture can directly be your uh, ADSR. So uh, because uh, the purpose of ADSR was also to mimic the behavior of an envelope of an acoustic instrument, and so you can directly make a, a, a long attack, and then have your sustain and make your release directly with your gesture. But there is some way to also pro, uh, to have some envelope directly on the EGAN matrix. Um, at the end here, you have five shape generators. That could be LFO or a simple uh, cycle uh, envelope. So you can, if you click on it, you can select that. And if I put a single cycle, there, you have two things to, to define. First, uh, when the, um, the trig of it, so for instance here, it, I can say my envelope will, will be trigged uh, as a not off. And here's the frequency of your, um, of your envelope. So I can put a, uh, something. And here, if I, so here it was just pressure. But now if I want, uh, instead, to have an envelope, I can put uh, another formula. And then, instead of having just uh, the not on information, I can select uh, my shape generator, which is the envelope. And I also can select the shape of it. So let's say, for instance, uh, a triangle. So now, when I press a key, It will directly trigger um, the envelope, but um, if you want to have uh, something um, depending of the pressure, so de depending in fact of the velocity of your gesture, uh, you have different way to do it. But one way is uh, to multiply uh, that um, that shape generator with your pressure. So here, you can select, in fact, the um, operation uh, between your gesture. And now I can also uh, make, make it a little shorter on frequency to hear more correctly. So, OK. So, 
So now my envelope is depending on velocity, but um, you, you can, and you can, for instance, uh, add another continuous uh, data uh, with with that um, uh, with that uh, envelope. So I can take another oscillator, and for instance, if I want to change uh, the <coughs> Uh, the tune of this oscillator, I can put a ratio. So, for example, I can put one octave higher than the first one. So, for that, uh, I can multiply there my uh, x, uh, my pitch, by two. So, um, it will be one octave higher. And I can take another formula, for instance, to have another continuous data. So, if I play, you can. <laughs> But if I play slowly, I will just have this, this second oscillator. So that's the first idea to have a, a, a classic, uh, to a classic envelope, depend, uh, which is depending on velocity and have um, continuous data at the same time. So now, if you want to have uh, some release, because here, everything is depending on pressure. But if you, if you raise your finger, uh, so you don't have any pressure information. So everything is multiplied by zero, and it will cut the sound. Uh, so for that particular purpose, if you want to have some release, uh, you have a parameter called persistence uh, on your formula. And so now, if I, if I add some persistence on my first envelope, and on my second um, oscillator, which is uh, continuous, you can. So it could be useful if you want to make uh, some pad sound, uh, etc. With it. Um, so, um, so yes. So something is really interesting is that you can uh, also. Um, because it's totally modular, you can really make what you want and have a, um, a kind of total freedom of it. So, for instance, you can uh, directly uh, play with the stereo uh, field on the matrix. Um, one important uh, thing to know is you can mute any formula uh, with the spacebar uh, on your computer. So, I can, for instance, mute my envelope there. Uh, by pressing space, uh, and so I just have my continuous. Um, and I can take another oscillator and take the, my previous form formula uh, there and put it f on my third oscillator. So I will have uh, one octave um, higher on my uh, uh, left position. Uh, so it's uh, of course it's better to have some uh, headphone host or so speaker to eat it right now, but it's just to showing some uh, interaction possibility uh, um, you can get uh, and um, and so but um, Another possibility on the matrix is now I, I was working uh, just with uh, continuous data, but you can also take the uh, acceleration, the derivative movement of your movement. So here I can also select different kind of curve. And you can, instead of uh, taking the continuous uh, control uh, on the formula, you can take the, deri uh, the derivative, and uh, and now, so I can have a higher a higher range. I can put a multiplier so at normally. So on this case, it's not really useful, but it's just to showing the interaction. But if now we can. Um, we see some kind of physical modeling uh, model. It, it could be a, a way to trig, uh, to trig the sound of it. So um, let, let's try to... Um, uh, my USB cable. <laughs> um, so 
Uh, yeah, it was the five uh, basic uh, gener um, uh, uh, generators, but here you have different kind of more complex block. Uh, and let's try to, to take the first one, uh, which called uh, Biquad Bank. So um, on here, uh, so on this kind of physical model, uh, you need an excitation. Uh, to make it work, to uh, because it's a it's a suite of bond pass filter, so it needs to be uh, excited by something, uh, and then you have to define a frequency. So uh, let's begin to uh, define a frequency. Um, you you have the, um, uh, the the spaces relation between the different bond pass. Uh, so let's take the kind of for now the normal. Uh, the normal harmonic spacing, and it needs also to have um, uh, uh, the, the, the global resonance uh, of the different filters. So, uh, and we can read this from zero to zero to one. So, uh, let's put something. And in order to make uh, uh, to excite this model, uh, let's take the noise, the direct noise, for now. Sorry. And uh, so, I can you, you can put so uh, it's important to uh, to work with really small value at the beginning <laughs> when you don't know how the model works, or you can quite quickly uh, <laughs> explode explode the model. Yeah, and, and your you ears. should be coming with anything that resonates in the system and just proceed with caution. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so I can cut all the output for now. So let's take it. So I can take the derivative, and I, I can also uh, multiply by a factor um, to have a small value. So for instance, instead of one, I can take 0 0.01. I can multiply my output with that, uh, with that, and um, and take it also uh, only when I press a key with a gate. Okay, if now I take uh, the derivative, the derivative uh, of my gesture and output the model. Uh, it's really small value. I <laughs> can put something. So if I don't move my finger, I will not have any, have any sound, but Uh, so, so it's also uh, a kind of interaction that uh, it's the first time <laughs> I saw uh, something like that on the Eagle Matrix, and uh, it's, uh, so it also it's provided a lot of new ideas with that. So, so now I have nothing is that is not really resonant. I don't have uh, a lot of uh, persistence of, on my sound. So if I Take the same formula for the global resonance of a model. You can directly change it to have a more pal mute sound. So here I adjust here the noise. And the issue right now is is too resonant. Uh, I can hear really the note. Uh, but because I, I've got all the gesture all the gesture directly on the formula. I can make something like that. So, at the beginning, I can have the sound really, really muted, and, and can, um, I can um, increase uh, the resonance uh, by moving um, my Z pressure position. And so now, so at max pressure, I, I've got a resonant, a, a more resonant model. But, but at the beginning, I've got uh, a really mute sound. And uh, if I want to add something on the aftertouch, I've can, I already got uh, the aftertouch available there. Uh, here, sorry. Uh, so. There is uh, so, but uh, as you see, um, already got a formula there uh, just 
for my first uh, pressure part. But on the, you can uh, combine different formula on the matrix. So on the end of the formula, you can see, you can uh, make an operation with another one. So if I click there and add something, you can add uh, another formula. So let's take a, a, an unused formula. For this one, the formula, uh, the formula F. And I, I can add it. And so if I make the same thing with a really small value and add my aftertouch there. I can get it to, to be sure that I will have no residue when I release my finger. And of course, it's... Uh, So that kind of uh, idea of combining different gestures and different uh, formula there. But because it's also a semi-modular environment, you can uh, combine also as a different kind of synthesis as you wanted. And it's also very unique to have this possibility. So um, if I take my first <coughs> oscillator, or, uh, or for example, the second oscillator there, so um, And if, if I take it with a continuous, uh, continuous control. Uh, so um, just mute my, uh, I just mute there, uh, the physical model just to hear the oscillator. I can make uh, an FM modulation <coughs> between my physical model and my first oscillator. So for that, uh, so here it was the output of the physical uh, model, the Bquad bank. Um, so it's bank A. And I can take it to the phase input of my second oscillator. So let's take another formula for that. And um, it could be a question. So it was uh, just the oscillator. Here, the physical model. And now, if I take uh, just the oscillator, but with an FM of the physical model on it. So it's really open uh, a new way to think about synthesis, uh, because here is a quite simple example, but you can take this physical model and put it on another models and then making some feedbacks through a filter and, uh, and make a, um, uh, um, use a small delay to, uh, to modulate everything. This is really, it's really open to you. And, uh, and uh, that's, that's um, having that possibility with all the gesture operation, uh, uh, the particular gesture uh, uh, operation opens uh, really, I think, a new world uh, into synthesis. Um, and so we can, uh, sorry, we can continue to work um, a little on that preset. So at the beginning, I just, I just put just uh, di the direct noise uh, to excite my model. But uh, if I want to, um, uh, to change the excitation, something I can make is to pass that noise into, uh, into a filter. So I can take the same uh, formula, but put it on a filter. And so the filter need uh, two other things. It need to a frequency. So I can put a, formul, uh, a formula for that. And uh, it needs a resonance uh, number. So uh, I can put um, a discrete number uh, for that. So uh, let's make, uh, so if uh, it is more than one, it will be not too, too much resonant. And uh, I can take the output of uh, my filter um, to the input of my, um, uh, of, of my uh, Bquad filter. So let's take, uh, another formula and just put a, a value to, to hear that. So 
So if I change the frequency of my filter, I will have uh, uh, a, a darker or brighter sound. But of course, here I put uh, just one number, but I can put uh, any, any gesture uh, to change that behavior. So I can put a, a, a small number on the, free, on the frequency on the, when you put the note off. Uh, but something, if I want it more brighter on the aftertouch, uh, I can put um, here another gesture. And so. And so that what I, I explained just a, a little before. So if I if I play on my pressure, I've got this on, but I can directly go on my aftertouch uh, to have a more dynamic uh, approach on the on the keyboard. So, but it's also something uh, you can control uh, with a macro. Uh, with a macro parameter. So um, if you want to make a macro, so here you have six macro controller, controller. <laughs> and um, if you want uh, to assign uh, a macro controller to something, you can have, you have an, editor, an edit zone at the bottom. So here I want to assign something to, uh, the, um, to my macro one. It could be the brightness. Uh, so And um, there is different way to, to use the macro. Here, you can directly select the macro one here. And so now, so um, in now, if I play my preset, uh, you can think it's, it, there is a lack of, uh, of attack on it. Uh, so for that, um, you can take uh, the, um, the input of noise. So right now, uh, the input of the noise is just with uh, the read on the first pressure part. It, it just with the, um, the, the derivative movement uh, of the pressure. But um, so I add something here with F. You can see when your um, different formula are linked, uh, you can see directly here with a, a blue point. Uh, so, so I have a E plus F, and I can make another plus, so I can take my G formula. And for my G formula, uh, I can take the same approach as on the, be on the beginning to take a shape generator. Yeah, I can take a, a, a pulse. And um, to, to, um, to make it um, uh, velocity responsive, I multiply it by my pressure, so normally. So it was with and without, it was like that. Um, so that's a, a, small, uh, uh, a small thing I learned uh, with the matrix, but uh, there's uh, a lot of things to explore and, uh, and to show. Uh, I, I don't know if you have any question uh, on, uh, on that part, yeah? Um, the mark, again, that, that's one of the articles. It looks like you have some uh, physical bombs. Yeah. Are those assignable to the macro controls? Uh, yeah, here. So, uh, if, I don't know if you can see quite clearly. So, uh, I, so I just, uh, I made uh, a, a macro there for the brightness and here you can see my the macro appear on the interface. 
and so you can directly change it from the on uh, on the interface, and so you have the um, you have uh, right now the possibility to have six macro for all that uh, adjustment, and you can assign uh, any of those macro to the to the mod wheel on the Osmos or one of the two pe um, uh, pedal input on the on the unit. And I think it's also because uh, the gestures is uh, it's invite you to 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 really go make uh, deep on the interaction because the interaction is at the center of all the modulation and of your connection point you make on the synthesis part. So um, so yes, it's uh, it, I, I think if I uh, I, I'm, I I try to make the same preset uh, but without any interaction from uh, the. Uh, from the keyboard or, or from the from the continuum, uh, it will not have any interest to make something like that. Yeah, yeah. yes, of that. Uh, and uh, yes, I don't know if there is other question or or perhaps um, just to uh, yeah. Maybe you can show how to save and load the as well. Oh uh, yeah, of course. So. Um, uh, yeah, if I'm happy, uh, so uh, there, there's different way to save it. Um, here on the Egan matrix, you, you got all your um, user presets there. Uh, you, so you can uh, make a, a shift plus click to select uh, a place where to save your preset. Or you can directly save it there. So, uh, yes, sorry. Uh, And uh, so I've got my, my preset there, and I can also drag and drop to a new, a new place, and all, those, um, all my presets will be di directly on my uh, user, uh, available on my user interface. Uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Is it a special version of the editor for the Osmos? No, no, it's the exact same, uh, exact same version of it. Uh, you, you can you can download it from uh, the Aconudo website, and it will be the same version. Uh, the only thing is, I I just change the the color uh, uh, during the super boost, but it's uh, uh, well, yeah, sorry, it's a normal, <laughs> it's the classic version, <laughs> the classic flavor of it. Um, and yes, yeah, so. so it's just a small part, but for any formula, there, are, um, there is, I think it, I, I just here show it for the projector, it would be better in, <laughs> in on, the, uh, on the live version. Um, I show one way uh, to deal with formula, to deal with parameters, but in fact, there is different, uh, different way to make uh, the exact same idea and something is really interesting because uh, you can think of uh, two person can think of the same zone and because they choose a different way to put the interaction uh, different way to uh, to deal with formula and you will have a different uh, result and uh, I think so also really interesting that to uh, to see that and to see on, on I learned also for, of course from uh, uh, from preset from Ed and Christoph and you can see how they uh, how people work, and, and so it's a really good way to learn uh, uh, to learn how to uh, to work uh, um, uh, and have fun to, with the matrix. So, uh, to explain, if you, for instance, uh, oh, want uh, if you open that preset and don't know how how the preset work, uh, you can here see the different formula, and for each formula, you can see. Uh, the interaction, so you see the Y, the Z. Uh, here you see a little uh, here, so it's, there is a macro here. 
um, you can see um, you can see on that formula uh, that one so I have a shape, the shape generator one uh, there and uh, it's a way to to see how the preset work and for instance I, I don't want uh, I, I open that preset but uh, I don't want anything on the aftertouch uh, you can just select the different formula and just uh, put nothing on the aftertouch and uh, and now yeah I've got nothing <laughs> on it but it's a way that um, for if you want to convert uh, a preset uh, from the continuum to the osmose uh, as uh, Ed uh, showed this morning uh, it's a good way to uh, to easily see different the different kind of interactions that uh, already occur in a in a preset and Maybe just, just a little comment just to uh, that uh, parameter. I, I experienced that uh, when you choose a different kind of curve, it, it makes a real difference. Mm -hmm. So um, if you uh, want to have uh, a faster reaction, of the, um, it, often it's, it's useful to have a bigger <coughs> um, um, yeah. use it in, in linear mode. Instead of exponential yeah. mode, then uh, in, in many times uh, you, you do not need uh, additional <coughs> tech with shape generator. Often it, it's to uh, that the exact the thing I, I want to feel. When mm. I'm so we, we know that on all platforms, most of the uh, already made uh, um, Osmos preset, uh, we choose uh, an, exponent an exponential cur curve uh, because a, a lot of keyboardists are not really uh, at ease with have this amount of expression under their finger. And another thing is that you can already, you can also change uh, the curve uh, directly on the Osmos interface. So the goal was to have the same kind of curve on all the presets. There is still some example of DRAM or like that, uh, uh, which have a uh, linear curve, but most of them uh, have uh, an, exponential, uh, an exponential curve. But uh, if you want to change it to linear for all the presets, you can, uh, uh, a way to do it is just to, uh, uh, to change the, cur the, the, the shape of the curve there and to save it for uh, all the presets. So, so you have more, um, a more sensitive uh, reaction. The, the interesting part is that, that you can do it for different sounds yeah. differently, so every sound reacts just the way you, you want to have yeah. Yeah. What happens uh, if you use the audio inputs with the Osmos in the game uh, Nothing, <laughs> 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 uh, be because there is no audio input on the Osmos. So, so that's why you need a continuum too. <laughs> but some people are getting the uh, Egan matrix module, a uh, little separate box. Then you take the output of the osmos and go into that and use it that way. Yeah, we take extra hardware or something. In, in, in actual fact, on the continuum, it's almost never used. To. It's very, well, okay, in this crowd, maybe some people use it, but there's two people. How many user presets are you able to serve? Um, user presets, there is uh, 128 uh, user presets. And on the, <coughs> and on the um, uh, library, uh, I think people will be, but you can save more than uh, uh, 8,000 uh, 8, presets, something like that, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the bigger deal with the library is that there will be a way to add to it. Right now, the library is sort of a monolithic thing, but um, if you can add to the library, then the sky's the limit. We, we, we aren't there yet. Okay. Okay, so there is no other question. Uh, perhaps we can make a break. <laughs>